Did you know that as many as 100,000 people die from blood clots each year? In this first episode of Critical Conversations on Venous Thromboembolism, a master class series on DVT and PE, Drs. Cohen and Dottelzweig examine the statistics that highlight thrombosis as a major contributor to the global burden of disease and discuss the risk factors and consequences of VTE. Access the full series and complete the post-test for credit at peerview.com forward slash HBR 860. Hello, this is Andrew Cohen from King's College London, and joining me is Stephen Deitelsweg from the Oshner Health System in New Orleans and the University of Queensland. Welcome to this masterclass podcast series on VTE. Over the course of eight concise episodes, we'll take you on a comprehensive tour of many important aspects of VTE diagnosis and treatment. The complete masterclass runs for about an hour, but you can listen to each of the episodes one at a time or all at once as you prefer. So let's start with episode one. Why are we talking about VTE? The reason we're talking about VTE is that it's a common problem. It's prevalent, it's fatal in some cases, and it leads to a significant burden. And it's often missed because of awareness problems, because we're not able to diagnose it in a timely fashion, because risk assessment isn't always performed, and there are problems with barriers of transition of care from hospitals to primary care or primary care back to hospitals. And with that in mind, let's briefly review the etiology, the risk factors, and the need for treatment. Thank you, Ander. And certainly when we look to thrombosis at large and VTE as we're here today to discuss, the incidence and mortality of VTE rivals some of the most notable conditions that confront us today, namely ischemic stroke. And in that space, we now have the advantage from the call to action from the U.S. Surgeon General a few years back and reaffirmed by the American Heart Association and now on a large scale, globally, we have World Thrombosis Day that occurs every year on the birthday of Dr. Virkoff, and that's October 13th. And this all underscores the importance of mitigating against misdiagnosis of VTE and its potential harmful impact on our patients. And a couple of facts just to highlight to get things started, we know that blood clots can happen to anyone. And we also know that it's no longer should be viewed as a one and done occurrence, that three in 10 folks over the ensuing decade will have a recurrent event. And as such, we need to be mindful that many of our patients in our hospitals are at risk, such that 40% of them have at least three risk factors during their hospitalization. And that could be a whole host of things. Stephen, when you consider the mortality, though, I mean, it's really significant, but do you think it's an accurate assessment of the mortality or do you think it might be underdone because it's so difficult to diagnose prior to death? It's a great question, Andrew, that now where we're not having autopsy or such performed to really get some good statistics and some of our, our real-world evidence that we'll talk about later may not capture that aspect. So I do think it's just a subset of really the overall burden. I think that's your spot on there. And I think the only way we can prevent sudden death is to be aware of the risk and prevent it, as you were saying. So interesting, lots of work to be done still. And really when it comes down to the various types of risk factors, whether it's speaking to our medical conditions and the, or our surgical conditions, important to think about, is this a transient situation or is it a persistent situation? And folks should do a, a pause or a timeout to make that determination. Yeah, very important. And you know, the, the minor factors might seem important, but they actually underlie a higher risk of recurrence. And as do the major factors, if they're persistent, because they're going to go on and cause a prothrombotic state. But as you were saying, Steve, this is a problem for everybody, 
including our patients with infection. And we've seen the situation with COVID in the last couple of years. So we've really got to keep this in mind. Yes, and the fact that the COVID does um, is, is still so prominent in our management whether on a global scale, remember that up to four months plus, folks can still be at risk of ET after that, that development. But go ahead, I know you are gonna say a few words. No, I, I was just interested in your thoughts on that. And what are, you, what are your conclusions about this overall? We talked about how VT can and does occur in a variety of care settings across our continuum. It's associated with a multifaceted set of persistent challenges. So our patients, our clinicians, our health systems, all are, are partners in this effort. And since misdiagnosis carries such a high risk of serious harm, we need persistent vigilance around the risk factors for, for once, the ones that we discussed and others. And in the upcoming episodes, we'll discuss some really important evidence-based strategies for diagnosing and treating VTE. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode. Download the slides and practice aids for this episode and others at peerview.com forward slash HBR 860. Be sure to listen to all eight episodes in this masterclass series and complete the post-test for instant credit at peerview.com forward slash HBR 860. This activity is supported by an educational grant from the Bristol-Myers Squibb and Pfizer Alliance.